Good morning. Today we are going to look at the equations for kinetic energy and angular momentum for a point particle moving in a circle. Flippin' physics! Bo, what are the general equations for translational and rotational kinetic energy? Translational kinetic energy equals one-half mass times the velocity squared, and rotational kinetic energy equals one-half rotational inertia times angular velocity squared. So which one of these two equations do we use for the kinetic energy of a point particle moving in a circle? Well, the point particle is clearly revolving about an axis of rotation, so we should use the rotational kinetic energy equation. Actually, the center of mass of the point particle is not staying in one constant location, so it's moving translationally. We should use the translational kinetic energy equation. I know you are both wrong because you're always wrong, but I don't know why. Okay, I like your arguments. However, let's take a closer look at the rotational kinetic energy equation. Bobby, what is the equation for rotational inertia of a system of particles? The rotational inertia of a system of particles equals the sum of the expression mass times the square of r, the distance from the axis of rotation to the center of mass of the particle, with one of those expressions for each particle in the system. That means the rotational inertia of a single point particle equals mass times r squared, which we can substitute back into the rotational inertia equation. And the tangential velocity of the point particle equals radius times angular velocity, so the square of the velocity of the point particle equals the square of the radius of the circle times the square of the angular velocity of the point particle. And we can substitute linear velocity squared in for radius squared times angular velocity squared. That means the two equations for kinetic energy are equal. We can use either the translational or rotational kinetic energy equation for a point particle moving in a circle. I told you you were both wrong. No, no we, we were, were both, both right. right. Jinx, you owe me a soda. soda. Very good. It is correct that the translational and rotational kinetic energy equations are equivalent for a point particle moving in a circle. Now, what about the equations for angular momentum of a point particle and angular momentum of a rigid object with shape? Well, the equation for the angular momentum of a point particle is the r vector, which goes from the axis of rotation to the center of mass of the particle, times the point particle's mass, times its velocity, times sine of the angle between the direction of r and the velocity. And the equation for the angular momentum of a rigid object with shape equals rotational inertia times angular velocity. In the point particle equation, we can substitute radius for r and radius times angular velocity for linear velocity because it is a tangential velocity, which equals radius times angular velocity. And because the linear velocity is a tangential velocity and the point particle is moving in a circle, the angle between the r vector and the tangential velocity is always 90 degrees and the sine of 90 degrees equals 1. Then we can substitute rotational inertia in for mass times radius squared, and again, the two equations are the same. <laughs> That's pretty cool. It, it does not matter which equation we use for the angular momentum of a point particle moving in a circle. Very nice, y'all. It is correct that the angular momentum equation for a rigid object with shape is equivalent to the one for a point particle when the point particle is moving in a circle. Now, what if the point particle is moving instead in an ellipse, like a satellite moving in an elliptical orbit? Bobby, does that change any of our derivations? Uh, looking at the kinetic energy equations, I do not see anything that changes. R is still the distance from the axis of rotation to the center of mass of the point particle. The value of R will change as the point particle moves through the ellipse, but, but it still has the same value for the rotational inertia and tangential velocity equations. So I guess the kinetic energy equations are still the same, even if the point particle is moving in an ellipse. That's correct, Bobby. Hold up, Mr. P. Yes, Bob? The kinetic energy of an object in an elliptical orbit is constant? I thought satellites sped up as they got closer to the objects they orbit. What gives? No, but we are saying that the two equations for kinetic energy are equivalent for a satellite in an elliptical orbit. The kinetic energy is not constant. That, that's something entirely different. Right. Thanks. Thanks, Billy. And Billy, what about the angular momentum equations? How are they affected by the point particle moving through an ellipse rather than a circle? Well... 
R is still the same. Um, Oh, a a angular momentum is a vector. The, the direction matters. Uh, the angle theta in the angular momentum of a point particle equation will no longer always be 90 degrees if it's moving through an ellipse and not a circle. And that means that the equations for angular momentum will no longer be equivalent for an object moving through an ellipse. That is correct. Kinetic energy is a scalar. However, angular momentum is a vector. Therefore, the direction matters for angular momentum. When moving in an ellipse, the angle between the r vector and the linear velocity of the point particle is no longer always 90 degrees, so the two angular momentum equations are no longer equivalent. Thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoyed learning with you.